What's up everybody? Today's video I'm going to do a tutorial on kind of like my whole workflow of how I edit a Milky Way picture. I took this photo a couple weeks ago and um, a lot of people asked me to just do a whole a whole video dedicated to the start and finish of my post processing. So that's what I'm going to try and do today uh, with this recording. Now I just want people to be aware though regardless of what I do today uh, I might change my method or my technique a few months from now because I'm constantly evolving and trying new things and I think you should too. This will hopefully get you pointed in the right direction to create a better image but it's it's definitely um, it's just a stepping stone. You should always try to find an even better way and that's that's the goal with photography. So with that out of the way let's, let's get into the picture. Now I first set up uh, my headlamp on these rocks right here and I kind of use that to focus my camera and uh, just just to kind of give me a general idea of where I want to stand because I knew I want to be in the picture and light up these rocks and, and really make the foreground stand out more than what it was you know without any lights on them so that's what I did right here and then as you see from the next next picture here I am standing on the rocks with a light sphere that I got from Amazon for like 10 bucks and I uh, used a SB 700 light and then I triggered it with uh, pocket wizards. So I, I took seven photos with me standing in that position and that was because I would plan on stacking these seven pictures just to kind of clean up the foreground. Uh, if you decide to sell your images really big or if you want to sell them through like stock agencies, they are sticklers for a clean image and the seven images will help me kind of clean up the foreground and make me more confident to sell my pictures at a higher resolution than if uh, I didn't stack it and this will definitely reduce the noise. I, in fact I think uh, in the future I might try and do 15 photos just to kind of get it even cleaner than what, what I got from the seven pictures. And then after I took a picture uh, with me in it I took 10 photos, 10 consecutive photos of just the Milky Way and uh, me off the rocks. And this is just because I, I really want to take the Milky Way from these pictures, stack them, and um, combine it with uh, the foreground right here. That way I get the cleanest image possible. So let's get into the editing process. First, I'm going to select all my photos and I'm going to remove chromatic aberrations, enable profile correction, and I put the vignetting around 70. I'm also going to dehaze a little bit. This is great for heavily light polluted areas like New Jersey. Um, so I'm gonna do that. And next I want to adjust the white balance since clearly my white balance was off. It was very cold that day and extremely windy. So I was kind of in a rush and um, I didn't set my white balance. So that's what we want to do now is fix that. You see the white balance is slightly different um, on these pictures than it is with me in the photo. So I'm gonna set. I'm gonna basically edit them separately. Basically, we're just gonna cool it down and. Bring, get rid of some of the magenta that was in there. I'm gonna go a little bit cooler. Now I like the sky, but I don't like the rocks. They're just too blue. So what I'm ending up doing is taking a gradient filter and we're going to adjust the white balance of just the foreground portion. So we're going to warm that back up. I'm 
my computer might get a little laggy because I'm recording uh, the screen and we're going to do some pretty heavy processing so just bear with me. I'm going to make the foreground a little bit warmer. That should be good. Now, even though we're not going to use this sky, I still want to kind of make it match the sky that we're going to put in place of it. So I'm going to just brighten the exposure up a little bit. It looks something like that. Now we want to go back to these pictures. They're a little underexposed, so we're going to brighten the exposure. Or make it a little bit cooler as well. Alright, that's pretty similar to the sky here. Sorry, it's lagging a little bit. So that'll be easy to match up when we go to bring them in Photoshop later. So next thing I want to do is export these 10 images of the sky. And I'm just going to call it Milky Way Sky. Export them as a TIFF. Um, actually, let's do. I'm not going to resize them. All right, so that's exporting. Then, once they're done, I'm going to bring them in Starry Landscape Stacker. Now, if you don't have Starry Landscape Stacker and you want to you know, clean up your night sky images, you can do this technique uh, using Photoshop and it's a lot more tedious. So I, I always recommend people buy uh, Starry Landscape Stacker for 30 bucks if they have a Mac. But if you don't have a Mac, unfortunately they, they don't have it for a PC. So you're, you're stuck kind of doing the the Photoshop method if um, you know until they work on creating something like this for a PC okay so the pictures are done exporting now we want to go to file open and select those images now I'm just going to mask off the sky by applying all these dots. Just want to go around the perimeter and make sure that the program has enough dots to recognize uh, the sky versus the foreground. And if you want to remove, we'll just click this button right here. And we can get rid of these red dots that are on the foreground. Once that's done, just hit Find Sky. We're going to paint some of the ground back right here. All right, that looks pretty good. Now let's go to sky, there's a couple of parts right here. Usually around the edge, you gotta just be careful. 
it doesn't pick up sometimes. Okay, so once that's done, hit Align and Save. Okay, so that finished aligning the stars and should have cleaned up the image. We'll zoom in later and check it out. So we're going to hit save and save. Now we could close Starry Landscape Stacker. Go find our sky. We'll do the composite. Just drag that into Lightroom. Hit import. All photographs. Okay, so here's our stacked image. And you can see, I'll show you what uh, it looks like compared to just one photo. Okay, as you see here, the photo on the left is our stacked image, and the photo on our right is just one single raw, and uh, you can definitely see how clean it got. And it still maintained uh, pretty good sharpness. So we hit done. That. All right, now just to declutter, I'm just gonna remove these raw images and just leave this stacked. All right, so I got my stacked sky right here. And now what we have to do is stack the foreground and then combine the two. So what we're gonna do is select all these images, go to edit, Edit in, open as layers in Photoshop. Okay, so we have our pictures in Photoshop now, and we are going to create a smart object with uh, just the seven pictures of myself. We're gonna leave the sky alone for now. So right click and go to convert to smart object. Okay, I'm gonna make a copy of this smart object just because I wanna show you the difference between mean and median stack mode. Uh, both of them average out your picture, but the one averages it out uh, and also helps with, um, with motion. Um, if there's a lot of motion going on, it'll help reduce that, and that's median. So let's first start off with, uh, let's go to layer, Smart object, stack mode, mean. Okay, so that was mean. And then this one, I'm gonna do layer, smart object, stack mode, median. And I'm gonna show you the difference between the two. And for this uh, particular picture, since I'm standing there and I have to hold my arm out, my arm was moving. Uh, using median is actually better for this photo and I'll show you exactly why let's just zoom in and we can see it cleaned up the foreground nicely um, it reduced a lot of the noise that was in there and in the water but you see my arm right here how there's some motion and, and my body as well uh, that's what happens when you use mean now if I hide this layer which is the the mean and go to median you can still see the noise is gone um, but you also see my arm is a lot less there's a lot less movement in my arm and my body so this is uh you know if you have something where there's a little bit of movement in the picture you may want to use median instead of mean and i'll show you the oops let's go back over here i'll show you i'll, I'll go back and forth so you guys can see Jesus Christ. 
anyway as you see that's median and this is mean so for this particular image I'm going to delete the mean and just keep my median stack right here so now I got my foreground and my sky as you can see the sky for this picture since it's all blended together it's a bunch of you know star trails which we don't want to use that for now so I'm gonna make a copy of both my foreground and background layer just in case I make a mistake it gives me a little backup next thing I want to do I'm gonna sandwich my uh, my sky in between my a foreground layer and another foreground layer and this just makes uh, blending a little bit easier um, you'll see exactly what I'm talking about now what we want to do is create a layer mask and you know before I do that I just want to see how uh, how lined up I am it looks pretty good you actually check by switching this to difference and where it's really solid black you know you're in pretty good alignment with the image that's below it obviously this is all white because we have stars in the bottom image and star trails on the top so we don't have to ignore that and ignore this because we have flash here and this image does not so so that looks pretty good and I'm not gonna mess with it so we're gonna click on my layer mask go to the paintbrush and we'll increase the size I'm actually gonna increase the hardness to 100% as well and I'm just gonna start oops make this a hundred percent and we're gonna paint away the star trail sky and replace it with our nice clean sky that we created from the 10 image stack you could use little bracket buttons to change the size of your brush now this picture is a little tricky because you have a flash right here which um, goes into the sky so I'll show you how I blend that um, it's nothing really too hard but it, it is an added element that kind of you know makes blending a little more difficult for now I'm actually gonna paint into it and we'll uh, fix this up in a little bit so continue going on I'm gonna get pretty close to uh, to my my body and the edge of the foreground and the sky where they meet. Now, because there's so much light pollution in New Jersey and probably some clouds that are really low. Um, blending this is, is pretty easy because the Milky Way and the stars they don't go all the way directly to the horizon um, you can see it's kind of like a dead space zone right here so blending this um, it, it, it's fairly simple uh, there's a couple ways to do it we could do it manually or uh, we could play around and right click on the layer mask and go to select the mask and we can zoom in here and run this along the edge and this will also clean up that little bit that I didn't paint away of the of the foreground again don't worry about this light area we're gonna make this better in a second just 
kind of go along like this. And that's doing a pretty good job right there. Um, it's a little bit of a color uh, variance right here, but it's not too bad. I'm just going to play around with the settings just a little bit. All right, I shifted that edge just to kind of get rid of that little dark area um, that it wasn't blending too nice right here. So yeah, I'm go a little bit further. This is why it's important to keep your tripod steady uh, if you're trying to blend several images like this because blending is so much easier if your photos are in alignment. All right, so that looks pretty good. I'm gonna hit okay. All right, so I created this new layer and we're gonna use that. And we're gonna ignore this layer right here and just use this new one that it provided for us. So let's zoom in and paint back my uh, shoulder and my head that got messed up when we were doing, um, when we were fine tuning the edge. Okay, so that's pretty good for now. Next thing we have to do is, is fix this light situation right here and kind of just blend it a little better with my sky. Um, so what I'm gonna do is increase my brush size. I wanna make it pretty big. Yeah, like right, right around this range. Make the hardness to zero. Uh, make hardness zero. And we're gonna bring the opacity down a lot. We wanna be very subtle and just keep on kinda clicking on this area until it brings back the light. You can see I'm starting to get the, the light beam back. And we just kind of want to fade it out and brush it. So that was, turn these layers, that's what the light originally looked like. And that's what it looks like now with the new sky. That's pretty natural looking. I like it. We don't want to go too much because you can see you're going to bring back some of the star trails right here. If you go too much, just lower this opacity even more, change your color to black, and you kind of paint in the areas where you went a little too heavy. You go all right so we just got to fade that in nice and natural that looks pretty good right there okay guys so the next thing I want to do is work on the sky so I'm gonna actually make a copy of the sky layer and that way if I go a little too overboard I could dial it back down or delete the layer and the first thing we're going to do is add a curve layer to it and we're going to do a basic s curve where we increase the highlights 
and decrease the shadows. We don't want to go too overboard with this. So just play around till you get something that's pretty natural looking and uh, and and you don't want to make your foreground stand out and, and look uh, unnatural to the sky. So that's something to be aware of. Uh, once you get it to how you like, you could hit OK. See here the the before and the after. Um, the sky is just so washed out from light pollution, and this S curve helps kind of just bring back some of the detail and the color. It's a little on the pink side. We could always fix the you know, white balance again some more, but for now I'll just leave it. I'm just going to check along the horizon. Yeah, everything seems to be blending pretty nicely. I'm going to click on this layer and go to Dodge, Highlights, keep it on 1. And we're going to increase this brush. All right, I'm just going to brush along here and bring out the core of the Milky Way and like the dust and all the goodness that the Milky Way has to offer. I'll show you the before and after. You don't have to go crazy. Um, just that little bit it really makes it pop and stand out some more. Next we could switch to shadows and go to burn. I'm going to increase the size of my brush and just kind of burn over the whole sky a little bit. Now if you go too much, all you have to do is lower the opacity of this layer and you can dial it down. So that's the beauty of working on a duplicate layer. So I really like the sky now and everything's coming together. Uh, there's a few things in the foreground that I want to clean up, but before I do that, I'm actually just going to flatten the image. Um, don't flatten the image until you're satisfied with everything. I'm pretty much satisfied, so I'm going to do that. Hit OK. Alright guys, so now that the image is flattened, uh, there's a couple things I want to address. And that's like this pink color hue down these rocks right here. And um, the way I'm going to do that is make a copy of this layer. And we're going to switch it to color. And now we're gonna take either the eyedropper tool or you can take your brush tool and hit option on your keyboard or alt and select this rock color right here. Or actually, let's go a little darker. We'll select this right here and make your opacity around 40%. If it's too dark, again, we could just lower the opacity of, the, of this layer and it'll blend nicely. And what we're going to do is just paint over this area. And that's kind of going to replace the pink color with the color we selected. For this rock, I'll select right here and paint this little spot, as well as this spot right here. It just takes away some of that, that magenta look. Here, I'll show you the before and after. Before, after. And that looks pretty good. So again, we could flatten our image. Hit File, Save. Close this. All right, so here's our new image. We got our nice clean foreground 
with our nice clean sky. The sky to me is still a little on the pink side. So I wanna adjust that only. I'm gonna do another gradient and kind of make it a little cooler and a little on the green side to, to get rid of the magenta. Nothing too crazy. Just like that. Next, I'm gonna take my oval mask or circular mask And we can do this to enhance the Milky Way core a little bit more. Just bump up the clarity. So you don't want to go too much. So we'll go around. Around 16. You can also take another, another mask right here. And we can do the same thing. We can increase the clarity a little bit these rocks sometimes I'll take it a step further and I'll bring it into color effects go edit a copy with the Lightroom adjustments So we're going to select Glamour Glow, which is a pretty nice effect. This kind of gives that a little dreamy effect to it. So that's without it. That's with it. You don't want to go crazy. hit save and I'm just going to increase my whites a little bit All right guys, so that's my workflow uh, for this particular image. And on the left is the glamour glow and on the right is the non-glamour glow. And both images look really cool to me. And uh, it's kind of personal preference at this point. So this just gives you a little bit of an insight of, of what goes into creating some of my images. So I hope this helped you guys out. Please like and subscribe. And if you guys have any questions, leave them in the comments below. I try my best to answer everyone. I'm really happy the community we're, we're growing and creating on my channel. Um, I just want to help people. I want other people to help people. And that's what it's all about, just doing fun stuff like this. So take care, guys. I'll see you next week. Bye.